Hey everyone. There seems to be quite a few questions about how to feed ChatGPT data within Typebot. So I'd like to make a quick video on how you can do that. For the majority of use cases out there, I would recommend what Baptiste suggests right here. Just simply enter the command, the instructions, the behavior that you want ChatGPT to have. And this would go in the system role. For the other use cases that need to be a little bit more dynamic, I have a couple of different options for you. One option is to use the condition logic, as you see here, to then pull a system prompt from a set variable block. And then the other option is using a Google Sheet to pull data from. I'll be doing a quick overview on both methods. For this method, using the condition block and the set variable block, you can treat your set variable blocks as the, your data source. In other words, the text that commands or sends instructions on how ChatGPT should respond to user questions. Let's step through this type of flow. First, we prompt the user to select a city to then share things to do on their visit. And then we give them two options, San Diego and San Francisco. When the user selects one of these cities, it's going to be saved as a selected city variable down here. So I'll click on San Diego. And with this condition block, we're setting the system prompt for the San Diego version of the Traver Planner suggestions. And now we're in the user input where I'm going to type in a question. So I'll ask it, what are some fun things to do? And then ChatGPT responds back with this answer. And if I type in, what are something fun to do in San Francisco, it's going to respond with, sorry, I only know things to do in the sunny city of San Diego. Ask me another question. I explicitly instructed ChatGPT to answer with this prompt right here. Let's take a quick look at what that looks like. It's a little easier to see on this text editor, but the system prompt that I'm feeding ChatGPT looks like this. You are Travel GPT, a travel planner that only answers questions related to travel to San Diego, California. If you get a question that's not about San Diego, California, respond with the following. Sorry, I only know about things to do in the sunny city of San Diego, California. Ask me another question. So to recap, when the user selects San Diego as the selected city, we use this conditional to route which system prompt to use. And then we set the system prompt variable right over here. If you imagine for a moment, maybe you're working on a client website or maybe on your website where you have say 10 product pages and on each page, perhaps you want to have a question and answer chat GPT prompt by breaking out your product data by individual pages or by individual products. I think it's easier to break it out this way so that when your product changes, or you need to adjust something about that prompt, you can just do so in your variable instead of trying to make edits in one big text block. Also, there seems to be a character limit when you make an API call, and you can learn all about other limits like these rate limits here on the documentation. If you're finding this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Now I'll show you how to pull data from a Google Sheet to feed your system prompt in your API call in OpenAI. Something to clarify here, when you're feeding data to OpenAI, you're actually just telling it what to do. You're giving it instruction. You're telling it what kind of behavior you want it to have when it answers questions. As you see the data in Google Sheets, they're actually just the system prompts that we want to feed over to the system role in the OpenAI block. Let's step through the type flow so you can see how it works. Just like in the last example, we are prompting the user to select a city to then share things to do on their visit. This time I'll pick San Francisco. And in the background here, we went over to my account, went to this workbook, went to this worksheet, got data from the sheet, filtered by city, which contains the user selected city here in this variable and then we extracted the system prompt. So it did something like this, filtered by San Francisco, and then it's pulling this value from this column. Next, we ask it what's something fun to do. And as expected, ChatGPT gives us a list of things to do while in San Francisco. And inversely, if we ask it what's something fun to do in San Diego, it'll say, sorry, I only know about things to do in the foggy city of San Francisco. 
asked me another question. Something to pay special attention to. This particular model does not always pay strong attention to system messages. So you might have to switch from this model to this one right here. Also, the quality of your responses from ChatGPT comes from your instructions, your commands to how you define this behavior to be. So you may have to kind of play around with your system prompt. Also, if you want ChatGPT to have memory, you need to use this really cool feature that Baptiste has provided for us in Typebot called Messages Sequence. He created a template that I copied for this demo. And last thing, I highly recommend for you to give maybe five to 10 minutes to read over this chat completions documentation to get a little bit more familiar on how the OpenAI API works. I think it'll help you understand what's happening in Typebot when you try to make an OpenAI API call. All right, see you in the next video.